Today I'm going to show you how to make a light and comforting meal you can put together using leftover salmon and rice. So stick around. Ochazuke literally means soaked in tea. And it's the name of a class of dishes made by pouring hot tea or dashi over a bowl of rice that's topped with savory condiments. It's often made with ingredients like umeboshi, salted kombu, or mentaiko. But today I want to show you how to make it with my Japanese breakfast salmon. I'll include a link to that recipe at the end of this video, so be sure to stick around for that. The salmon is flaked on top of the rice with other ingredients for flavor and texture like sesame seeds, rice crackers, and herbs. And you cover it all with hot tea, which melds all of the flavors together into a comforting soup that's not as heavy as a traditional porridge. Let's start with a look at our ingredients. For the salmon, any cooked salted salmon will work, but I'm using 100 grams of my Japanese breakfast salmon. I'll include a link to the recipe in the description down below. For two servings, you'll also need 300 grams of cooked rice and a pot of Japanese tea. I'm using hojicha today, but sencha or genmaicha work just as well. For the toppings, I have about 15 grams of rice crackers, a half teaspoon of black sesame seeds, and some mitsuba. The first thing you want to do is chop up the rice crackers. Traditionally, we use peppercorn-sized rice crackers called adare for this, but you can get a similar taste and texture by chopping up larger rice crackers. This is going to give our ochazuke a nice crunchy texture, as well as the nutty flavor of toasted rice. Next, I'm going to chop up our mitsuba. It's an herb that tastes like a cross between carrots and celery. The purpose is to provide a refreshing contrast to the fish, so if you can't find it, other aromatics like shiso, scallions, or lemon zest will work. Alright, let's make our tea. I've got a tea bag of hojicha, which is a roasted green tea with a wonderful earthy aroma. Most East Asian style teas will work here, and in Japan, we also make ochazuke with dashi stock. To prepare the rice, I'm going to pour some hot water over it and mix it up to break up any clumps. This not only reheats the rice, it also gets rid of the excess starch on the surface of the rice that'll cloud your tea. Now we're going to drain this well. Then I'm going to transfer the rice to a rice bowl which is known as an ochawan in Japanese. Before I put this together, I want to thank Musubi Kiln for sending us the adorable rice bowl and teapot I used in this video. They ship worldwide, so if you want to pick up your own set, I'll include links to them in the description down below. You can also get 5% off by using coupon code NORECIPES and every purchase you make using these links helps to support this channel. So be sure to check out some of their other beautiful Japanese tableware while you're there. Okay, to assemble this, I'm gonna flake some of our salmon on top of the rice. Be sure to pick out any bones as you do this to make it easier to eat. By the way, you can make other types of ochazuke by swapping the salmon out for other salty ingredients like salted kombu, mentaiko, or umeboshi. So this is a super flexible recipe. Next, I'm going to sprinkle on some of the black sesame seeds, as well as the mitsuba. I'm going to finish this off with some rice crackers, and our salmon ochazuke is ready to serve. Ochazuke is like cereal in that you want to eat it as soon as you pour the tea over the rice. So I usually do this at the table. Oh man, this looks so good. All right, I'm going to dig in here, get a little salmon, some of that great broth underneath. Itadakimasu. Mmm, that's delicious. You've got that salty salmon but some of that salt and the broth has come out into the tea. So you have kind of almost like a little soup down there. And you got these little crunchy bits of rice cracker that add a little bit of texture to the dish. Mmm. This is the ultimate comfort food. 
I made this using my Japanese breakfast salmon today, but any leftover salmon will work. So I hope you'll give this a try. As always, you can let me know you enjoyed this video by giving this a big thumbs up, and don't forget to share it with all your friends who love Japanese food. All right, I'm gonna go have this before the rice gets soggy. Oh, and before I forget, be sure to check out this video for my Japanese breakfast salmon recipe. And I'll catch you in the next one.